I'm uh, pleased to introduce uh, these two students, uh, Kira Watler and uh, Diana Thompson. They are undergraduates at CBS. They will graduate in a few days or so. So these students have a few of the many I have who took a course with me called Cell and Tissue Culture. And that inspired them in doing research. And I'm pleased to introduce them. So we decided that we were going to do a project about growing protoplasts. Well, this started when we worked with Dr. Sauter and his grad student, Vanessa. Well, when she was doing her thesis, there was a lot of question and not really good answers about where her cauliflower came from and how it was maintained because it was from a grocery store. So we decided that we were going to grow it, help her out in that aspect, and just grow from protoplast, which is cells without cell walls, that they could use for their project. Well, um, so I'm going to go into what cauliflower is not a model organism, because there's a lot of aspects that make it more complicated to research and stuff like that. Well, when a scientist decides what a model, what a model organism is, they want it to be able to look at that question they have or idea and make sure that that organism they choose is able to be tested. Another aspect that a um, scientist uses is if that model organism can go through that idea and that question, well, can we also um, look at that process in a different organism? So I'm going to go into like mice. We use mice and humans. Well, mice are easily bred and easily taken care of, and they regenerate quickly. So it's easy to look at how one question, or if we put genes in them, how they can develop over time, and see how that question or process or whatever the scientist is going to look at, um, how it affects the mice. And um, then we can apply that to humans. So, and then, we're also going to go into how plants are used. Well, in plant studies, we use Arabidopsis, which is a weed, and we also use tobacco. Tobacco is used because um, it is very susceptible to pathogens, and we can also um, look into the tobacco mosaic virus, which is the first virus that was identified. And we can see how that virus was looked into <coughs> at the tobacco and how that any other pathogen can be used. We also look at Arabidopsis because it can clone itself easily. So if you're working with Arabidopsis and your plant dies, well then you can just have another plant that's the same plant and you'll have to restart your um, experiment. So we decided to use cauliflower because Arabidopsis and cauliflower are also in the same family, so why not try to make cauliflower the, uh, another way to make a model work? Yes. And so that's where we get into the real nitty gritty of what our experiment actually was. And our experiment kind of had a multi, a multi goals with it. And so the first one was to uh, start with, to meet the qualifications for that class we took last semester. And our experiment failed miserably last semester. So we had to have a lot of overhaul and got, we actually got it to work this semester. So that's good. We really wanted to do that to help Dr. Sauter's lab with that thing. But also we're graduating this semester. We wanted to learn as much as we can in this program. And so we have pretty much our protocol was like an A to Z list of what we really wanted to do and if we had time, some other things we wanted to do. And so for the protoplasting that we do, what you, ha what you have to do with any plant cell and tissue culture is you first have to sterilize it because you're going to grow stuff and you don't want to grow bacteria or anything. You don't want to have contamination in it. So we sterilize plant cells. It's a very simple way. You just use some soap water, then some ethanol, then some bleach, and then you use sterilized water and you rinse all of that off and then now you have plant matter that you can do experiments with. And that's what this is showing here. And so what we did was we put an enzyme solution which would chew at the cell walls and get rid of it. Um, we put it in these petri dishes and for two reasons. One, the first step of this enzyme, of putting the plant matter in the enzyme solution, is you have to stick it in a vacuum for a little bit. And this, um, this makes it so that the enzyme solution can infiltrate the cells better. 
And that's just a fancy way of saying that it's going to get really soaked into the plant matter, and you're not just going to have to worry about just the surface being covered with this enzyme solution. It's going to be all of the cells. And so after we do that, we, put, we take the Petri dish out because we put it on a shaker incubator that just does this for 24 hours. And so it constantly swirls around forever. Um, and that's what that looks like when we have that. And after we have that, we do kind of two steps here. We have like a little flow chart, essentially. Um, we put it in a specific sugar solution for our further experiments. And then for the Dr. Sauter's lab part of this, we put it in growth media. And we have three different types of growth media that we're using because we have two goals for this. One, we want it to be very easily done because we really don't have that many students working on research. And two, we want to have the most yield for that effort. And so we have multiple um, different, we have three different solutions that we're using. And then we also have, in any cell culture, you have to have these pH indicators that will show you when all the nutrients have been used or when the waste is built up. And so this is what you want your media to look like, this beautiful wine color. And when it's this ugly yellow color, that's when you know you have to change the media and so your cells can keep growing. And so we're actually doing really, really good, like way better than we thought we were going to have one way better than last semester, and two, our protoplastic is actually doing, I know this doesn't look like a lot, but if you can actually see <laughs> several cells, and when you do the enzyme solution of this, you don't really get that much protoplast yield, so we really weren't expecting a lot, but we got a lot more than we could honestly, like, our wildest dreams came true with this. So it's working very, very well, and we're very excited, and so now we're just um, working on the the growth media, and that's just going to be a constant thing we don't really have to do a lot for. So then we move on to our second thing, which is our next step is going to be protoplast transfection assays, which is a really, really fancy term for we're putting genes into the cell. That's it. Very <laughs> simple. And so our first step is going to, that we talked about is we're going to try to put a pigment into the cauliflower cells, and that kind of defeats the purpose of this pig, of it not being a pigment, like Diana mentioned, because that causes a lot of contamination and everything. But we need to prove that our protocol for inserting the gene into the cauliflower cells works. And the easiest way to do that is with something you can see. And the easiest thing to see is color change. So we have this cell, the biggest one you can see right here, it's clear. And so if we put a pigment into it, it will no longer be clear. We can prove that this works. And we can move on to something more complex, like vitamins or anything like that. And then if that works, and this is going to take a lot more time than this protoplastic step has. But if we can get that to work, then we're going to move on to other things. And I don't know how many of these talks you've heard, but I'm sure you've heard, if you've been here for a couple biology ones, Western blotting and protein trend, um, assays, because those are, that's what we do in the biology department. We look at proteins, and that's the most important. So we're definitely going to look at that, because that's a solid skill for us to have. And it doesn't really, it's just an extra thing that we're tacking onto this experiment. Like, after we've done this pro, uh, protoplast transfection assay, what we wanted to accomplish for this semester is done. And so now it's just going to be, uh, the Western blotting would just be to make sure that we definitely have that skill when we graduate and to just make the most of our time here. Sweet. So it has the cell wall on it and you get the cell wall off of it? Yes, and so that's the main difference between plant cells and animal cells. So animal cells, which is what we have, we have these really round structures and they're not all of them are round, but they're really amorphous and there's not that structure. But plant cells have that structure, we call it a cell wall. And it's what, like I don't know if this plant is actually real, but if this plant were real, it's back here. It'd be the, the plant cell wall is why it can stand up like that. And so whenever you have a plant that droops and then you water it, it goes back, the cell wall is what's creating that structure of it. And so, but that cell wall is really thick since it's that structure. And so it's really hard to do anything to that cell with it. So whenever we do experiments on it, we have to take it away so we can make it more like an animal cell and then it's easier to shove stuff in. <laughs> I like the choreography that goes with it. Yeah, I, have to, I talk with my hands. It's just, it's a problem. Anything else? Well, well my question was, this is brought up with callus, right? Well, no. What we did is we just, we took the plant cell and instead of creating the callus, instead of culturing from a callus, which is, a callus is, um, how would you describe that? 
cancer? Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really, it's what it is. So what we do is we, we injure the plant so that it creates a whole bunch of cells. And it's the same thing as a callus on your foot. You, your foot has a lot of friction, it gets a lot of, of injury, and then it creates that hard, like, that hard, I don't know, hard skin. Yeah, hard, hard skin. skin. There's a lot of cells there. And so we do that in plant, in plant culture so that we can get that a lot of cells in one place and we can do different things with it. And so that's normally how we do plant cell culture. But with this one, we're, we're culturing directly from the protoplast. And so we're taking the protoplast, and then we're just going to grow the protoplast. So hopefully, none of our cells in this line have a cell wall. So they don't? OK, that's what yes. I was asking. That's where I was going for. OK. Any others? All right. Well, thank you. We yes.